One of the most unbelievable and memorable experience during the Freedom Ride, arriving in Montgomery. We were forced to stay in the Greyhound bus station in Birmingham, Alabama, the night before. And each time we went out to try to board the bus, the bus driver was there. I'm not driving. On one occasion, the bus driver said, I have only one life to give. I'm not going to give it to CORE or the NACP. Robert Kennedy, the Attorney General, and others tried to get the Greyhound officials to move us from Birmingham to Montgomery. And finally, they did agree that we would leave early on a Saturday morning. And they made arrangements for two officials of the Greyhound Company would be on the bus. And there would be a private plane flying over the bus. And every 15 miles, there would be a patrol car. You could see the patrol car. And every now and then, you would see the plane when we arrived at the Greyhound bus station in Montgomery about 10.30 a.m. that Saturday morning. You didn't see the patrol car. You didn't see the plane. And the moment, the very moment that we started down the steps off the bus, an angry mob just came out of nowhere. And they turned on members of the press. They started beating the reporters, taking their pencils, their pads, their pens, taking the cameras from the photographers, steel photographer, the television people, smashing the cameras, beating the reporters. There was one cab trying to pick us up. And we got most of the women in cabs, in, in one taxi cab. It was an interracial group. And this black cab driver said, I cannot drive. It's against the law in Alabama for blacks and whites to be in the same taxi cab. So one of the black women said, get out, I'll drive. So the young white women got out so the cab could move. In the meantime, my seatmate, young white gentleman, we were forced up against the wall of the station and we both were beaten. I was hit in the head with a crate, left bloody and unconscious. My seatmate was just beaten just so badly. Blood was coming from all, just all over his face, from his head, his mouth, and we both went down. I don't know how we survived. In the meantime, an official of the Department of Justice represented President Kennedy and Robert Kennedy were driving a car by, and he tried to get the young white women into his car for their protection. And while he was opening his door to tell them to get in, someone came up behind him hit him in the head with a lead pipe. And he became unconscious. And later, the next day, when all of the Freedom Riders that could go to a church for a mass rally, an angry mob tried to throw stink bombs into the church to start burning cars on the outside. And that's when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was at this meeting, in support of the Freedom Riders. Went down into the basement of the church, the same church where I had met Dr. King and Reverend Abernathy for the first time. He got on the telephone, called Attorney General Robert Kennedy. And Robert Kennedy spoke to his brother, President Kennedy. And that's when United States Marshals was called out and the Alabama National Guard were federalized and the city of Montgomery was put under martial law. I thought we might die that night in that church.